Hey YouTube, this is Blue Spruce 786 um, This is my Tau army. I wanted to talk a little bit about these guys. Uh, it's a Warhammer 40k army for anybody that's not familiar with um, the game. It's a miniatures combat game from Games Workshop. Um, you paint these figures, you make army lists for them, you get a, a book which is called a codex and in that decks are all these units your troops your elites your commanders your tanks and um, they all have a point value you go through the book and you put these armies together and then you go to the store your club or whatever and you put your armies down and uh, two guys will fight it out with the armies according to the rules uh, you move with rulers they move six inches or twelve inches um, you roll a lot of d6s. It's kind of like chess. A big part of the hobby is putting the models together and painting them. It's a good time. It's something I've enjoyed. Uh, that's the basics of the game. I'll leave you guys a, a link to another video I did that goes a little bit more in depth on that. On this series, I just wanted to talk about my army specifically and get some feedback on that. I've, I've been running this army for a long time. Uh, I have a lot of work into developing their storyline and who they are and and that character has actually started to show up in my modeling which is something sometimes you see uh, but only in these really old armies that have been used a lot and that's my ethereal Amon Pac uh, the army originally was the orchid hunters the story was that Amon Pak is from the, the Dalith Sept, and um, his parents were merchants, water cast merchants. But he was born with the freakish ability of the Ethereals to elicit loyalty and, and to peg emotions in other Tau. Being this sort of in between character, he was an outcast, a bit of a pariah, and as time went on, he, he found himself moving further and further afield. His mother had an obsession with um, rare plants from various systems and planets and places throughout the, um, the universe, and he began to collect these plants, and that became an occupation, an obsession. Um, it is his defining feature or factor. Some of the places they went were dangerous and as time went on they developed um, you know into an armed cadre. Uh, this is many years ago we're assuming it's 999 right now. Um, he lived during the the first human campaign into Tau space. Uh, and as Tau only lived for 40 years, he would have been long gone, except uh, he's been stored in long term stasis. And so, in that way, he wakes up every few years and, and oversees the, the sept, or rather, the, uh, the, the cadre kind of directs its progress as at this point he's become obsessed with finding the proverbial fountain of youth. Uh, some of the medicines and the plants he's found have been able to to create longevity in the town and uh, he, he's searching for the ultimate form of longevity. In his absence the, uh, the cadre is currently run by Akilava uh, an old warrior who runs an XV suit. The units we're going to talk about today are actually the fire warriors. Uh, these are the Myrmidon, uh, one of my units, with the Mark II drones. Being from Dalith, we uh, pride ourselves in our technological breakthroughs and the, the Mark II drones are certainly one of those. Uh, they're, they're faster 
Uh, they're, they're easier to work with, and they're, they're more potent in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Of course, there's no stat change on these. It's just a modeling difference. But I've, I've been very happy with them. And when you put them down on the board, there's a, you know, it changes things up a little bit. A conversion like that is, is appreciated enough that you can certainly get away with it. Uh, and it elicits a, a bit of awe. These two drones have a little bit more weight than uh, they, they would otherwise. It's just Frisbee drones. And I can talk about how we did that, how I modeled that, uh, if I get some comments that indicate people would like to do that. Uh, this was just sort of a trial. I wanted to start talking about 40K. Um, <clears throat> uh, so the guy in charge here is old one eye. He's got a good scar on his eye. I don't know if you can see that from here. Uh, but I was happy with the way it came out. And he carries a bonding knife. They are, of course, all bonded. You'll notice a human conversion or two here or there. There's, there's one in this unit uh, currently. They were on Taros, and the site they were guarding was also inhabited by humans. And, and when they, they left, the Tau uh, left that planet, they, the humans went with them. When this cadre left that planet, uh, they took their, their humans with them as they'd suffered great casualties and, and weren't going to um, become a, a cohesive unit of their own. Uh, here's my two piranhas, Xanthos and Balios. These are Forge World piranhas. Oh god, I wish I'd had the plastic ones. Uh, these were such a bear to get together, and there's more epoxy on these than you can imagine. Uh, I was very happy with the way the running boards came out on this, and the stowage. Uh, these are for long-term scouting. They carry extra water and fuel, and... Um, supplies such as tents and tarps that can make a, a unit more comfortable out in the field. When I put that together I thought about I wanted a um a four man transport transport for pathfinders and I had the uh the vehicle conversion rules. Those rules have you know they're outdated enough now that the point cost was prohibitive. So I just uh I now it's got running boards and it's just a modeling effect. There's no rules to go along with those. The drones on these don't clip into the wings nicely at all. So I, I glued the frisbee portion, magnetized the bottom, and just stick the guns to it. Um, there's not enough material to get the magnets seated correctly, so they're a little bit wobbly looking. You know, they're not they're not straight. Um my painting is rough in a way. But I think on these it lends to um, a weathered and beaten up look. So if your painting is not perfect, don't don't worry about it. Just uh, consider that as part of your army's character and personality. Uh, that is indeed a, an Anshi model. I, I put him up on that pedestal so that I could put a little die behind him indicating his uh, how many hit points he had left, which I, I never used. I just I, I have these little silver rings I'll put on his arm to indicate damage, and now he stands up above everything, so we always get shot. If you're playing with Anju, you're, you're not playing a real competitive list anyway, uh, so that it hasn't been an issue. I just like the model. Um, oh, there's the human there. There's a great little vignette somewhere. I'll have to dig it up in one of the old white dwarfs. It's about a Tau propaganda film sent into human territory done by a, uh, a human. And there's an indication of who they think this human is. You know, the um, Adeptus or Astartes or whoever was going over this film. And uh, he's actually got a name, Slavatsky or something like that. So I'll have to find a name for him. And those are the Myrmidon. Uh, they've been a good unit for me. I think they're 10 men strong. Am I missing a model there? They're, they're 10 men strong with the two drones. And it's, it's certainly more of a fluffy unit than it is a hardcore one. Of course, I'd, 
I'd pull the drones and just have the ten men there, and I wouldn't even run the, the way in charge. I'd just run them all as straight fire warriors, Shasla. But I've been playing long enough that I'm all done with, uh, you know, the nuts and bolts units anymore. These guys can do some, some more versatile things. Uh, when, when you dress a unit out with a few options here and there, rather than min-maxing your whole uh, FOC. And I kind of like the options. I don't win as many games, but the games I do win are more fun. And even the games I lose, when I pull off a, a tactical trick that I was trying to do, uh, that more than compensates for, um, you know, not winning the game. All right, we're at 11 minutes now. I'm going to wrap this up. I, I hope some people enjoy this. If you do, please leave some feedback. I'm not sure I'm going to continue with it. This is primarily an RPG site. Um, but I've got, I've got enough time into these guys that I, I thought they could use some time in the spotlight. All right. Night on.